Everything you need to know about quadratics. This is going to be part one. There's going to be 21 questions. It's going to move between standard, factored, and vertex form. So it's going to include everything that you should have learned about quadratics and you should be comfortable doing. So there will be a really good handout for you in the description that talks about all these different things in words. And this lesson is going to be putting some numbers to those descriptors that ask you to do different tasks. So we have standard, factored, and vertex form. So you probably remember standard form would be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, sometimes called the general form. The vertex form, y equals ax minus h squared plus k and the factored form y equals a x minus s times x minus t. So we're going to flip back and forth between all these different formats. So the first question, I have standard form. Here's my standard form equation and I want to put it into vertex form. So I taught you two techniques. One was using completing the square and the other using x equals minus b over 2a to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. I will do both for you. Okay, so if I want to use completing the square, I need to factor the coefficient out of the x squared for the first two terms only. So I take out my 2, x squared plus 2x, and then I take half the coefficient of x, so half of 2 is 1, I square it, I add 1, I subtract 1, and I put the minus 1 out there. Now I look to see this is my perfect square trinomial. Make sure you're adding first. And I complete the square. So I make a perfect square trinomial. I use this sign, the square root of 1, which is 1 squared 2 times minus 1 to take this number out of the bracket is minus 2 minus one more, and there's my completing the square lesson. You can go back and check that. The other option, so let's, let's give this one a title. We'll call this one completing the square. Completing the square. It's doable. However, if you're having trouble with that, you have a second option and that is to use x equals minus b over 2a. Remember that was part of the quadratic formula. So for this question, x would be equal to minus b, so that's minus 4 over 2a's, 2 times 2, and that would give me minus 1. So that's my x coordinate, which matches here, because remember when I put it back in here, it's minus that, because the form, formula is minus h. So then I need to know when x equals minus 1, what's y equal to? And that's going to give me the height of the function on the axis of symmetry. Remember, this would be either the axis of symmetry or the x coordinate of the vertex. So I plug in minus 1 and I would have 2 times minus 1 squared plus 4 times minus 1 minus 1 and that's going to give me 2 minus 5 is minus 3 and you can see those are the same numbers that I had in the vertex form. So when I write out the vertex form now remember I use the a value which is 2 that doesn't change, it doesn't matter what format you're in, the a value is always the same. And I have x minus minus 1 minus 3. So that's what we call using the part of the quadratic formula, so using x equals minus b over 2a. Okay, so there's two ways to find the vertex form. Now what if we're in factored form and I want to get to vertex form, like this equation? Well, one way to do it would be to expand this first. So if I expand it, 
I would have, now I leave my negative outside first and I'm going to do my foil method or just, you know, X times X. We did this way back and these two, right? So I'm going to do X squared and then minus 4X plus 2X minus 8. Now, remember, I'm trying to put this into into vertex form so the negative I can just leave out there so I'm going to leave that because I would have factored that out if I wanted to complete the square anyway so minus 2x minus 8 okay so we have it now in standard form with the negative factored up that's okay leave it there and now I'm going to complete the square so x squared minus 2x half the coefficient of x, half of 2 is 1, square it, add 1, subtract 1, and I still have minus 8. But I'm taking it out of here, so that's going to be plus 8. So now I have minus, so I have x minus 1 squared. Take this out, so add 1 to 8, and I get 9. So again, we could have started with, um, once we had it into standard form, we could have used x equals minus b, so that's going to be minus minus 2, so that's 2 over 2a over 2, and that gives me 1 for my x-coordinate, matches here, right, because we put in a minus, and then when x equals 1, when it's 1, it's a really easy calculation, isn't it? So if I put in a 1 here, I have, it, have 3 times minus 3. So 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. And then minus that, y equals, oh, let me write it in here. So I'd say 1 plus 2 times 1 minus 4. And you do all that calculation, you're going to get 9 as well. So then I'm left with y equals the negative, that's my a, is negative 1, and I have x minus 1 squared plus 9. Okay, so that's another way of using minus b over 2a or completing the square. I won't write that out a second time. Okay, question number 3, we're going to try to go from vertex form to standard form. So you need to be really good with moving around. Now to get to standard form from vertex form, all we need to do is expand. All right, so I'm just going to expand this. So leave your minus 2 out. Square your binomial. Square twice the product. So the product is minus 4x. Twice it is minus 8x. Square the last term. Plus 16. Plus 3. And now you're going to expand the minus 2, multiply minus 2 into the bracket. It's going to be plus 16x minus 32 plus 3. And that was really an easy question, right? You can expand uh, minus 29. So why would you want to go from vertex form to standard form? Well, for a number of reasons. You might want to use a quadratic formula to find the zeros or you might want to know what the y-intercept is. So basically, it would be probably more to find the zeros in the end. Okay, factored form to standard form. Well, same thing, I need to expand it, right? Because I don't, I don't have my ax squared plus bx plus c. I don't know what a, b, and c are. So again, I'm going to leave the two out front and I'm going to expand these two binomials. So that's x squared minus 7x plus x minus 7. So I'm just going to simplify what's in the bracket first. You might be able to do that in your head while you're expanding. And now multiply by 2. Minus 12x minus 14. Okay. So question number five now, we're going to go from vertex form to factored form. Well, to get to factored form, I need to 
be able to do a product sum, right? So I don't know what that is unless this is in standard form first. So just like I mentioned here, you might want to change vertex to standard to find the factors or to find the zeros in the end. So I'm going to leave the negative. I'm going to square my binomial, square, twice the product, and square. Notice your last term is always positive. And now I'm going to um, simplify this. So I have negative x squared plus 4x minus 4 plus 16 is going to be plus 12. Okay, so now I want to factor it. So factor. So I'm going to pull out that minus sign before I start my factoring. So x squared minus 4x minus 12. Now I want a product of minus 12 and a sum of minus 4. And I think you would see that's minus 6 times 2 is minus 12 and minus 6 um, plus 2 is equal to negative 4. So that gives me negative x minus 6. This is a simple trinomial just with a factored negative 1 out front and I have x plus 2. There you go. We went from vertex to factored form. How do I go from standard form to factored form? Well, that's just going from here down, right? It's already in standard form, so I'm looking for, this is a complex trinomial though. Look, it has a two. Mm, maybe we can factor that two out and make it simple. Wow, look at that. Two X minus 15, that was easy. We didn't need to use the complex formula or complex trinomial rules. Okay, so I'm looking for a product of minus 15 and a sum of positive 2. So that means that the larger number, one's positive, one's negative, but the larger one has to be positive, so I end up with a plus 2. And that would be 5 and minus 3. And then I just write them into the brackets here. 2x plus 5 and x minus 3. And once we're in factored form, course we can find the zeros of the function. We know the vertical stretch is 2. Okay, number 7. This one says using vertex form to state all the transformations and sketch the function. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little line here to keep this one out of the way because we need a little bit more space, I think. Okay, so let's state the transformations of this vertex form. Remember the vertex form is the best way to see all the transformations. You read them from left to right so that they're in the right order of how you would apply them to the graph of y equals x squared. So the first transformation is this negative sign. So that means it's a reflection about the x-axis. Reflection about the x-axis. Okay, what's the next thing? 2. What does 2 mean? You should know it means it's a vertical. Remember, it has to do with the y, so it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, and the very next one, this minus 3. What does that mean? Well, it has to do with the x's because it's inside the brackets. Anything outside the brackets is a vertical change. Inside is horizontal. Remember the x-axis is horizontal. So I have a horizontal shift to the right. Remember x's are weird. It looks like it should have gone left, but it's minus minus it. So horizontal shift right. How many units? Well, whatever the number is. Three units. And this plus one, again, that's outside the brackets, change to y, y's are vertical. So that's vertical, shift, and it's plus one, so that means up one unit. 
Okay, so I found all of the all of the transformations. So now I'm going to sketch it. And I forgot to draw an axis here for us. So the other thing you might want to find on your graph, in addition to knowing where the vertex is and the A value, is usually a y-intercept. So to find a y-intercept, you set x equal to 0. Why? Because on this axis, all the coordinates would be like 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, right? So you would plug that in. So when I plug in x is 0 here, I would get um, 3 squared is 9, minus 18, minus 17. Y-intercept is minus 17. Well, that's not going to fit on my graph, so I'm not going to use it <laughs> after all that. But it's a good idea to do. Okay, so where's the vertex? I want my vertex first. So it's 3 and 1. 3 and 1. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and up 1. Okay, now to get the shape of my parabola, I know that it is negative, so I know it's going to go down, and it has a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, so that means if I go over 1, I should go down 2. Over 1, down 2. So you can see that's why my y-intercept is so far down, because it's kind of a, it's a stretched parabola. So there you go. You've done a very decent sketch of this parabola. Okay, so we're almost done. The first part. So number eight is asking you to graph from standard form. Okay, so I don't have much to work with here. I know the y-intercept. The y-intercept is minus one. So I could put that on my graph. This is supposed to be a half. This is going to be minus one because I know some of the answers already. Okay, so... I don't know where the vertex is, I don't know where the zeros are, I don't know anything. So let's factor it first. And I'm looking for a product of minus 2 and a sum of 1. So that would be 2 times negative 1 is negative 1, and 2 plus negative 1 is positive 1. This is a complex trinomial. The coefficient is 2, so I have to put these numbers over 2 and reduce. So there's this one's done. This one I can't reduce. And I put my x with the bottom. So that gives me x plus 1, 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1, x plus 1. Doesn't matter what order you put these in. 2 times 3 is 3 times 2, right? Okay, so now I've got it in factored form. I know that the x-intercepts or the zeros of this function will be when each of these brackets is set to zero and I solve for x. So what makes this bracket zero? So I would say, well, x plus one is equal to zero. So x equals negative one is one of the x-intercepts. And the other one would be two x minus one set to zero. x equals one half. So therefore, the x-intercepts are 1 half and minus 1. So we'll put that on our graph way over here. So 1 half and minus 1, and I have a y-intercept here. Now don't think that the y-intercept, and this is something my students have done several times, because they have a number down here, they think that's going to be the lowest point or the part of the vertex but look how crooked that would be if you made that you know the axis of symmetry has to be exactly between minus one and a half so let's find the axis of symmetry um, now we, there's two ways to do that we can find the midpoint of these two or we could do x equals minus b over 2a, which is a very helpful little tool, isn't it? So minus b here would be minus 1 over 2a's, a is 2, so minus 1 quarter. So instead of doing minus 1 
plus a half divided by two. You can just use this little formula and it's so helpful. So here's my x of symmetry right here. So that's x equals minus one quarter. So I know my parabola is going to come down like this and it's going to go the lowest point there. And I do know that it is concave up because the a value is positive. Okay, so if I want to know the coordinates of this point, I would have to plug minus one quarter into this equation. So when x equals minus one quarter, and you probably will be asked to find that vertex, so don't say, oh, she's doing way too much work for me. Oh, it's just work. So I'm plugging in minus a quarter Everywhere I see an x, and I'm going to square this, so that's going to be 2 times 1 16th minus 1 quarter minus 1. 2 times 1 is 2, so that's going to be 1 eighth. 1 eighth minus 1 quarter is 2 eighths. Minus 1 is 8 eighths. So that's going to give me um, 1 minus 10 is minus 9 over 8. So that's just um, a little more than this is, this is minus 1 here. So it's just a little bit farther down. So my vertex, I'll just write it here. Vertex is... Uh, minus one quarter, that was my x coordinate, and minus nine eighths. Okay, so there's a very nice little example to graph. Okay, here's the last one we're going to do in this part, and I'll do a second part with some more questions in a minute. So graphing from factored form. So here, now I have everything factored, and I can tell you what the x-intercepts are. So the x-intercepts are 2 and 6. Okay, where's the axis of symmetry? Because 2 and 6, okay, let's put those little dots on here. I'm going to use 2 and 6. And I can't tell you where the axis of symmetry is yet. How do I find the axis of symmetry? Well, I know this is 2 and 6. The x of symmetry has to be right in between those two. So let's do axis of symmetry. So you can see with this equation, we don't have um, we don't have it in standard form, so I can't use the minus b over 2a to find the x of symmetry. I have to find the midpoint between 2 and 6. So I would say 2 plus 6 divided by 2. That's 8 divided by 2 is 4. And that makes sense, perfect sense, because it has to be in the middle of 2 and 6. So I have two values to the right, two values to the left. x equals 4. Okay, so I need to know what the vertex is. So I have 4, but I need to know the y-coordinate, or the height of the function on this axis. I know my function is concave up, because this is positive, so I know it has to be down here somewhere. So when x equals 4, let's find the y. So 1 half 4 minus 2 times 4 minus 6. So 1 half 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 minus 6 is minus 2. So that's giving me minus 4 over 2 is minus 2. So 4 and minus 2, that's my vertex, 4 minus 2. And look, I'm going over 2 to go up. So I'm going like this and like this. So if we were looking at, if I went over 1, I only go up a half, right? over one up a half because the a value is a half. Okay, so that's the first part of this lesson. There are um, 
I think there's 21 questions altogether, but they get a little bit shorter. The graphing ones take up a little more time. So there's a start for you. And again, I'll put the link to a really nice handout that shows all the descriptors of how you do it using words. And then each one of these numbers will be corresponding to one of the numbers on your, um, well, actually, I actually think you have to add the numbers, but it goes step by step. Okay, so hope that helps you. And I'll do a second lesson showing you the last part.